T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, go for main engine start, 1, 0, and lift off of the Atlas V rocket with Cygnus and the SS John Glenn, extending the research legacy for living and working in space. It's been over two years since Northrop Grumman has been able to launch their own spacecraft, the Cygnus resupply ship, since the demise of the Antares rocket that relied so much on Russian components and also Ukrainian components, which Congress no longer feels that American companies should have to do, probably quite wisely. So since that time, Northrop Grumman has relied on SpaceX to deliver the Cygnus to orbit and to resupply the International Space Station, which was a bit of a humiliating development given the fact that Northrop is a significant rival to SpaceX and has been really trying to get their capability up to a point to where they can realistically compete against SpaceX, but that's been the reality of things for some time until Northrop can finally get a new version of the Antares into service with the help of the Firefly Corporation. All of that being said, though, things have taken a significant downturn over the last 36 hours or so. The Cygnus XL, which, although not reusable, had a key advantage over the Dragon resupply ship from SpaceX given its enormous pressurized volume almost three times the pressurized cargo volume the Dragon is capable of carrying, which, by the way, has allowed Cygnus to carry much larger hauls of cargo up to the International Space Station, even though the theoretical mass of the payload of both spacecraft are roughly the same. The most that Cargo Dragon has ever carried up to the International Space Station has been 2.7 metric tons, whereas the Cygnus XL, on this most recent recent mission is carrying 4,990 kilograms worth of payload, nearly double the payload of the record capacity of Cargo Dragon. That being the case, this was going to be a big statement on the part of Northrop Grumman. They don't have reusability, but given the fact that the vast majority of the expense of a resupply mission to the International Space Station involves the launch costs and not the space spacecraft costs, this was their chance to demonstrate that they could deliver cargo more cheaply and more efficiently, a lot more cargo in a single mission that SpaceX could. That was the theory. The reality is Cygnus has suffered a significant malfunction with its primary drive system, a malfunction that has led to a missed rendezvous with the International Space Station, and at this point, NASA is trying to figure out whether or not this rendezvous is going to take place at all, because it's not just about Cygnus's inability to reach the International Space Station. If they have a malfunctioning propulsion system, this could theoretically put the ISS into significant jeopardy if a docking is attempted under these circumstances. Therefore, the reason that we probably haven't had an update on this situation from NASA for over 24 hours is not necessarily because they don't know what the problem is. They are now trying to assess whether or not Cygnus can safely dock with the ISS. If it can't, that means that they're going to be re-entering this spacecraft, which won't have any sort of danger for anybody on the ground or anything along those lines, but almost five tons of cargo, including some expensive and sophisticated equipment, will be lost. Now, according to the most recent reports, the problem emerged shortly after the spacecraft separated from the Falcon 9 upper stage. No indications that Falcon 9 caused the problem. Almost certainly the problem exists with the spacecraft. Engineers detected anomalies in the thrusters system during a planned engine burn intended to adjust the orbit and propel Cygnus XL towards the ISS. This glitch prevented the completion of the maneuver, leaving the spacecraft in a stable but suboptimal trajectory. NASA officials quickly assured that the vehicle remained safe and under control with backup systems allowing for alternative propulsion strategies.
Series. However, keep in mind that without the primary engine, these alternative propulsion strategies are more likely to involve re-entry than some kind of rendezvous plan. Although multiple smaller burns using secondary thrusters may be a solution, although that is far from certain. And as I mentioned before, even if they do get it working, there's probably going to be some worried people at NASA considering whether or not they should risk a docking given the circumstances. With a malfunctioning thruster system, it's hard to tell whether or not the RCS thrusters, the smaller scale thrusters designed to maneuver with, are going to be optimal during this process. However, one positive thing to mention is the fact that the Cygnus is grappled by the Canadarm on the International Space Station and does not use its propulsion system system to execute a docking maneuver with the station itself. Therefore, it never gets extremely close to the station while under its own control, and its propulsion system will not be operating while the Canadarm is grappling it. But all of that being said, it's still going to have to come pretty damn close to the station before the Canadarm can actually get a hold of it. So the whole thing definitely represents a risk here. And this mission, by the way, which was dubbed the NG-23, was set to support ongoing research in microgravity. A lot of equipment on board dedicated to this type of research. Now, the incident could prompt broader reviews of thruster reliability across resupply vehicles, especially as NASA eyes transitions to new orbital outposts like the planned Lunar Gateway, which was recently saved by Congress budget-wise. Industry experts point out that while such issues are rare, they serve as valuable lessons for future missions, such as those under the CRS-2 contracts that extend through the late 2020s. Beyond the immediate fix, this event highlights the evolving dynamics of commercial spaceflight, where companies like Northrop Grumman push boundaries to meet NASA's demands for efficiency and capacity. The Cygnus XL's design incorporates lessons from over a decade of ISS missions aiming to reduce costs and increase payload flexibility. Once resolved, the spacecraft is expected to dock successfully, but once again, I think that's a bit of a risk, a risk that could potentially lead to a repeat of the Starliner debacle, where one company definitely wants to risk a docking with the ISS or wants to try to push the technology given how much they're going to lose if it fails, and NASA's considerations of wanting to keep the ISS intact and safe over any other considerations. So there may be some discussions going on right now between Northrop and NASA with one side wanting to risk this docking and the other side definitely not wanting to risk it. In any event, hopefully we're going to get some more news on all of this. Perhaps some of this news has come out by the time this video is actually released, although I'm going to try to get it uploaded as rapidly as possible, and I will keep you folks updated on any new developments. Thanks very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and also please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. This is what allows me to diversify the kind of content I cover on this channel. Thanks again, and until next time, stay angry about space.